Hi everyone and welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. So in today's video I decided to talk about a brand that I feel like I don't talk about quite enough on my channel. Maybe that's because I don't own a piece from that. Okay, scratch that. I don't own a bag from that brand. I do own a couple of knickknacks but I don't own a like full-on bag from Dior. I don't quite know if I can justify spending 6,000 bucks on a Dior bag but I realized there are a couple of bags that are a little more affordable and very much underrated in my personal opinion. I hardly see anyone talk about the ones that I decided to talk about in this video. So we're gonna go through five different bags and all of them are below, most of them well below the 3000 US dollar mark. So let's get going. All right, so the first bag that I wanna talk about is the CD Signature Oval Camera Bag. I think that's the right order. It's a wordy title and the title says it all. It's a camera bag. I think I tried that one on Inherits last year. It did used to come in several different colors. I'm 99% certain that I tried on a white and maybe a cream or like a gold cognac-y kind of color online. Currently I was only able to find a black which is gorgeous and one version which weirdly is like the same price in uh, like the jacquard canvas and a little bit of leather on the handle. It does come with a handle which is adorable. It's like a tiny little handle similar to the handle on the pochette matisse so like one that you can lift up like a little bit. Anyway, where was I going with it? Alright, so um, it does come in full leather and a like oblique jacquard version with leather aspects. Same price on both of them and um, it's adorable. It is, yes, on the smaller side, but it's way bigger like capacity wise uh, than a walk style for instance because it's not particularly flat. It does have some width to it. Don't quote me on the exact measurements, but I'm going to um, link every single bag that I'm talking about in this video in the description box below. And yeah, obviously I'm going to include either photos or if I do have some mod shots um, while I'm talking, so you have some visuals and some eye candy, but yeah, it does have some width to it. You can easily fit your phone in there. Granted, I only tried it on with my, I think I have the iPhone 14 Pro, but not the Max. Key holder, card holder, hand sanitizer, like a couple additional knickknacks, I would guess. And price-wise, as I said, well below 3000 bucks. Yeah, I would highly suggest you check this one out. By the way, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, hi, my name is Leslie. I'm so glad to have you here. On my channel, I talk about all things luxury in particular handbags, but I cover a wide range of topics. I film unboxings, reviews, I adore filming travel vlogs, shopping vlogs and all that good stuff. So if any of that sounds like a thing, I would love for you to consider subscribing and joining my little YouTube family. Anyway, shameless plug out of the way, let's get to the second bag that I want to talk about and that is the My Dior mini bag. A little less on the casual side, a little more classy. It does come with a tiny top handle as well, but essentially it's like somewhat of a walk style bag. It does have a shoulder strap or more so a chain. It doesn't have any leather parts on there but the links are in different sizes which kind of adds a little more like intricacy to the uh, chain. Also it does have some fake pearls running through the chain which I think is so pretty and it does feature several elements that tie back to the yeah iconic Lady Dior aspects. So you have the beautiful lambskin stitched in the iconic Dior canache. You also have like in the front of the class basically like not a push button closure, but I think like magnetic. You have the Dior letters dangling there, like a miniature size of the classic Dior letters that hang on the Lady Dior. So I love those kind of details. And on the inside, it's fairly small. You have two main compartments. You do have a couple of card slots, I believe. So essentially it's, it's kind of like a wallet on chain type bag, which also means that it's on the flatter side. So you don't have that much width to it, but I'd say like, you can definitely fit your essentials and the chain is removable as well. I don't think it's adjustable, but it's removable. So you can wear it as a clutch as well. And as I said, it does have like a tiny little top handle, which is so adorable. The third bag that I want to mention is fairly similar, but still worth mentioning in my opinion, because also it's a couple of hundred bucks cheaper. And that is the, sorry, I have to look down for that. The My Dior Daily Chain Pouch. It doesn't come with a top handle. It does come with the dangly Dior lettuce in the front. And it also has the same kind of like metal strap with the different size links, which again, I adore and like the, pearl details running throughout. The layout is a little different. I think you might be able to fit a little more in there because you don't have like a middle divider. You do have like one main compartment still on the smaller side and then you have a zipper compartment on the thinner and smaller side but like you can definitely, I'd say you can definitely fit maybe your phone without a case. 
certainly a card holder. And then in the front, but still covered with a flap, you have like another open compartment. All right, bag number four. And if you're like, Leslie, the bags that you talked about so far are way too small or way too girly pretty. I've got you. So let's shift gears a little and talk about the, again, have to consult my notes. It's the Mini Dior Charm Bag. Sounds like just another like girly, pretty, like dangly Dior uh, lettuce kind of bag, but it isn't. It's actually from the men's line. Now, hear me out. It doesn't look overly masculine. I'd say definitely like unisex and sometimes, which is also one of the reasons why I, why I decided to include one of the men's bags. The men's range, not only with Dior, but f with Fendi as well, with Louis Vuitton, it does tend to get overlooked. Granted, if you're not a silver hardware girly, that might be a little tricky. Me personally, I'm like a gold hardware person through and through, but this bag comes in black, comes in cognac, gold, brown, and it comes in gray. And the gray with the silver hardware looks like a, a so gray bag, basically. So very like monochromatic, tone on tone, and I adore it. Also, you have a lot of features that, um, again, tie back to the like iconic Dior canage that comes on the Lady Dior, but yeah, in a more structural or like edgy way, I guess. So you have the canage kind of like leather piping on top of the bag. Um, it comes in, I think the leather is like cosmic leather. I don't know what that means. I guess it's a little more sturdy than the lambskin on the Lady Dior. But yeah, you have the like leather trims essentially that kind of tie back to the canache pattern and which I think is so genius. So on the flap, basically you have the hardware and it kind of looks like uh, those, as I said, those like Dior charms that hang on the Lady Dior were like frozen in mid dangle. So I don't know how to describe it. Again, photos will be on the screen. I love this. So it does say Dior, but in like a more in a more whimsy way, I guess, while still being masculine or like unisex, as I said. Anyway, you're gonna see it on the screen and it's a new release so for summer 2024. So it's not so much of a bag that's underrated, but more so like a new bag that maybe will fly under the radar, especially when it comes to like, yeah, girls looking for bags because it's part of the men's line. It does come with silver hardware, but as I said, especially the gray with silver hardware just looks phenomenal. So I'd highly suggest you check this one out. I think price-wise 2,800 USD plus tax obviously, but I think for the size of the bag, it does come in a bigger size, but I'm focusing on the mini or like small. For the size of the bag, full leather and everything, I'd say it's definitely worth checking out. So that's the fourth bag that I basically wanted to raise awareness on, I guess. And for the final and fifth bag, I decided to cheat a little. I hope you don't mind. So anyway, as I said, I decided to keep all of the bags that I'm talking about under 3000 US dollars. I mean, I'm based in Europe, so my currency is euros and you have a little more wiggle room when it comes to um, the 3K threshold when you look at European prices, but most of my um, followers and like my audience is from the US, according to my analytics, which also tell me that um, only like 20% of people returning to watch my videos actually subscribed. So again, if you could uh, change that and increase that number, that would be amazing. So yeah, consider subscribing. Anyway, <laughs> that's not the point of what I was going to say. So yeah, we're at a point where like actual functional handbags that are big enough to fit your essentials below 3K is kind of hard to find in Dior. I mean, I did scroll through the website and there are definitely a couple more handbag styles that are well below 3K. But for instance, there's, I think it's called the saddle rodeo pouch or something like that in my personal opinion i mean it's still expensive like 1900 bucks i think plus tax so still crazy expensive it's leather and all that but in my personal opinion it kind of looks like a sad uh, stripped down version of a saddlebag which i guess is the point but at the same time if you have a craving for a saddlebag i don't i I couldn't imagine a situation where getting the Rodeo pouch, I hope it's called Rodeo, but I'm fairly certain, will satisfy that craving because it does look like a sad and stripped down version of the saddle bag. So yeah, at the prices that we're talking about when it comes to Dior, you just shouldn't settle. That goes, like same applies to if you really want a Chanel classic flap, you shouldn't go for like a cheaper alternative, which granted may cost like half the price, but does it really satisfy the craving for a classic flap? I don't think so. Anyway, so long-winded way of saying, why not 
consider the pre-loved route. I'd say if we can make use of the fact that Dior isn't really known for holding its resale value. So yeah, depreciation is definitely an issue with Dior bags. And the fact that Dior somewhat regularly discontinues bags, I'd say let's do that. So for bag number five, I actually have two options for you. And that is the Diorama and the Dior Ever, both of which have long been discontinued, but I'd say they're pretty classic bags. They don't scream like 2019 or 2017 or something like that. They're fairly classic and you can score amazing deals. So I scrolled through a couple of resale and like pre-loved websites and picked out some of my favorites because you can like you can score so many amazing deals. I even found a couple of exotic bags like obviously not croc although there is one croc bag but I am not sure if it's actual croc or just croc embossed. Anyway I'm going to link that below. It's the Dior Ever like a cognac brown color. It does look like croc but I'm not a like an exotic connoisseur. There was below 3k, python below 3k, some of them are like way below 2k, even like like 1500 bucks for a Dior bag. Some of these aren't even worn like at all. I'd say that's amazing and they're decent sizes. So bag number five is something that you may need to go on a hunt for on pre-loved websites. So as I said, I'm going to leave a link to a couple of the ones that I found online in the description box below. And other than that, thank you so much for watching. Do let me know if you own any of the bags that I talked about in this video or do you like, are you aware of any other underrated but still on the lower end of the spectrum uh, bags when it comes to the prices. I would love to hear your thoughts and do let me know if you want me to go through a couple of other brands with a similar premise as this video. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I would love for you to consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up and I'm gonna catch you in one of my next videos. Bye.